This alone makes a massive difference to deficiency of recon senses because you can't tap it you have to hold it for like a second and look around and then you know and even then it doesn't seem super consistent so okay everyone's watching on twitch youtube facebook we're going to be checking out the mid-season update 1.6 where they're going over a lot of changes that we wanted in the game there's a lot of balance updates but there's a lot of call of life updates as well we're looking at a few huge updates especially we're seeing changes to the experience on console we're seeing gyro aim being added uh, just a nerf to recon finally is it enough we'll have to see and just a few more changes i've personally been requesting for a long time i don't know if embark watches my stream or my videos then again my suggestions for what to change in the game are really obvious yes there are drops on twitch so if you watch on twitch you will get drops i don't know how that works but apparently they're turned on so go tune in on twitch twitch.tv slash otter if you haven't and you can also get some drops for however long that is but we're going to be checking out the patch notes i'm gonna give you guys my take so some huge quality of life changes so people always just read this they never go over this because normally there's nothing here but one thing they have not mentioned they added 10 levels to your career rank with additional rewards you get some new skins by hitting level 50 and it's like an army guy it apparently looks really cool they also reduced the number of rounds you needed to get into rank tournament from 60 to 45 which would have been useful because we're going to do solo to the diamond and i level up my or i did all these rounds like yesterday okay balance changes let's dive into it this is one I've been really excited about. The Dome Shield will now use a squad color if they use enemy squad colors, which is the default setting is enabled. Which means that if the enemy heavy throws a Dome Shield, they're on the orange team, the dome will be orange. If they're on the red team, it will be red. Which is a massive quality of life change because sometimes you don't know which is which and it will be very useful to know which team that shield belongs to. That when you're gonna make a decision if you wanna focus the right team or whatever. Increase the invisibility interrupt grace period for teammates from 0.65 to 0.8 seconds. Or oh, even added a thing like plus and okay, so they raised it. <laughs> they added it for me because I read them wrong all the time. It actually might have. Increase the invisibility interrupt grace period from the player from 0 seconds to 0.45. Wait, invisibility interrupt grace period. If I read this correctly, this means that if you go invisible with the vanishing bomb, uh, if you take damage within the 0.45 seconds or first 0.45 seconds of your invisibility, you will not go uh, visible immediately, if I understand it correctly. Increase the duration of vanishing bomb invisibility on teammates from five to six seconds. So the goal is to make the vanishing bomb a little bit more better for um, team play, making light a little bit better for team play. I have not seen a full team do a vanishing bomb and run straight into a team and take the point yet, but I really want to see it. I really want to see it. It's going to happen at one point. Improved placement validation for zip lines, making them easier to deploy. Um, we're going to have to test this one out. I know there were a lot of complaints about the zip lines going from beta to live patch, so maybe it's closer to how it was in beta. We will see. Uh, then there's a lot of changes to Vegas. It's going to be hard for me to say you know exactly what all these things mean but i'll i will read through them anyways add as a cover to the side of kitchen trolleys to make them easier to use okay replace the zip line between eastwood and decra with a jump pad <laughs> like if you don't know if you don't know the map callouts it's kind of move various cover pieces to avoid gaps in cover move various chairs to make traversal easier removed turrets and tripwires map variant in quick cash bank it tournament and rank tournament modes while we fix okay so they're gonna reevaluate the turrets and tripwires i think that's a good idea because they're currently really annoying to deal with if you guys don't know which one this is talking about, it's the turret and the tripwires is the laser thing you have to step through and then maybe put some walls up and has the turrets go crazy. It's not super fun to play against, so I guess you're gonna try to change that up. Uh, for the casino, they removed some of the monitors in the casino so some doors are easier to see. Added an extra door to make traversal easier. Updated some vault spawn locations as Adam cover, added cover to some of them. The casino, I think in general, yeah, just a massive, it's just overall, they're making traversal easier. I'm just gonna like, we're not gonna go for every single thing here. You'll see it when we go into Vegas later. But they're changing how the map is designed to make it easier to travel across it. Will probably help with the flow of Vegas because as many people know, Vegas is not an enjoyable map traveling wise. Uh, specializations, mesh shield, exactly the same thing. This is actually probably a bigger one than the dome shield. The mesh shield will also now use squad colors which can help you discern which team is which. This actually adds another thing. Uh, or I never leveled to it because before you could hold your shield up as a heavy and this would not show what team you are which in some like if I'm if I'm trying to focus a team and they can just hold the shield up and play behind it I won't know which team that is for example but now that information is immediately visible when the shield goes up and it's just like a tiny thing when it comes to metagame which will make fights flow slightly different I believe I don't think people thought about it but it will you'll definitely notice that if you're the team that's ahead you will suddenly take a lot more damage if 
they know that, like, oh yeah, pink team is number one, we're gonna shoot the pink shield. It's, it's gonna be a big difference, I believe, in how the game plays out. And here, this is one of the big changes, there's a lot more, but this is a big change that a lot of people have been wondering about and have been asking for for a long time. Uh, recon sensors added a range limit to recon sensors to 30 meters. Players outside of this range will not be detected, so no longer, it is no longer across the entire map, it's just 30 meters. 30 meters is not that far. Players detected by recon sensors will now see a detected warning next to their HUD. So, okay, two things here, okay. This seems like a big nerf, and we have to talk about this more in depth, because this is like the main reason we're making a video out of this. This is not enough. We have, people have asked me for the last week or weeks, what do I think they should do about recon, and I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Not ha having not having played it yet, I can easily say that in theory, you, it's still too strong, because you have a wall hack, and the thing is, okay, so yeah, detected, wow, you can see on your screen when they can see you. It's not gonna change much, because there's already a audio cue, which tells you, like, if you aren't hearing impaired or play with no audio or music or whatever, right? You already know when you're getting scanned. You don't need the audio cue to tell you, oh, yeah, we're I'm scanned. You already knew it. This is just a quality of life thing, which is good, but it's not going to change anything. I already knew I was getting wall hacked. The 30 meters, however, will change a few things. One, it will change. Uh, it'll be harder to read. You can't tell exactly where enemies spawn on the map, which will make some macro decisions that the recon sensors allow you to do a lot worse. Or rather, it's not as efficient. You, you can't tell where the enemy spawns, you don't know how they're gonna rotate and whatever. You can't decide, you can't figure out, okay, these two teams are gonna fight for Vault 1, these are gonna fight for Vault 2, and so on and so on. So the macro decisions, the macro scale of Recon is gone, and instead it's it's more of a close range. But I think it's gonna be used the same way. The way I use it is, in a, like, 30 meters is a lot of range to work with. If I'm inside of a building, I can still see where everyone are. Uh, I can just pop my recon sensors, and then usually what I do is I pop my recon sensors and I see, okay, there's a guy there, there's a guy there, there's a guy there, and then I just turn him off, right? I don't, because I don't want to waste the, waste the cooldown. So what ends up happening is I turn him off, I know he's gonna peek on the wall on the left, I don't need to have vision of that, I already know he's gonna do that. I'll still have the game sense to make the right call, we're gonna swing this guy, his solo, uh, I'm gonna pre-aim here, I'm gonna rotate to take a different cover, or whatever, it's still infinite amount of information on your enemies, which will make still give you a massive leg up. Sure, you won't be able to see enemies farther away, 30 meters away, it's still, it's not a lot of range to work with, according to some, you can't see a third party coming in, and you can't see enemy rotations, but mid-fight, still believe it will be super viable, because wall hacks, in any game, is incredibly strong. And there's not really much counterplay to recon sensors, except, I guess now just don't be in range. So I don't think it's enough. I think if anything, if I would suggest anything to Embark, I saw this, I thought of this take and then I saw another guy say it on Reddit. Um, instead of making recon 30 meters, because now you have all these gadgets competing for each other. Like I said, you have a sonar grenade motion sensor. I think there's one more. Um, with that close range wall hack, what they should do instead is they should have the recon sensors is beyond let's say 30 meters, make recon sensors a long range ability, maybe even 50 meters. So you can see where enemies spawn, you can make the macro decisions, you can know, oh, there's a team coming in third party, and then you can supplement that wall hack knowledge with the sonars, with the motion grenades, or just game sense. And I think that would add more, more of a range to it, as in the way it's used, not just literally. And I, th I think that would be a better change than just making it be within 30 meters, giving you a wall hack, which gives you a massive leg up in any jewels. Oh yeah, there's tracking dart as well, thank you, I forgot about that one. So I think that is, overall, I don't think it's enough. I'm glad they're making changes to recon. I expected more because I said rework. This is just a nerf to a number, but and I, again, nerfing a number won't change much when you have an actual wall hack ability in the game. Hey, Otter from the future here. I'm just adding a real thing about the recon sensors. 30 meters does feel really short, but it still makes a massive difference when you're fighting CQB. Uh, it's really disorienting, you know, playing with it now because I'm not used to it and I'm expecting it to have a way longer range than it actually does, but I do believe that it'll still be extremely useful once you get used to it. It just has a little bit of a little bit of a uh, adjustment period. It's almost delayed, which wasn't in the patch notes. Yeah, see that? You activate it and it takes like a second. That's what's happening. That's probably why I'm not botting people as I should. That makes it even worse. That might actually be, I don't know if it's an intended change or undocumented. This alone makes a massive difference to the efficiency of recon sensors because you can't tap it. You have to hold it for like a second and look around and then you know. And even then it doesn't seem super consistent. Fixes, fix some small issues with the LH1 reload and Google and inspect animations. Updated reload animations when aiming downside to have slightly more movement to them. There's been changes to footstep audio and mix for the player teammates and enemies. I have trust issues. I've played Apex for five years and they always say they're fixing footsteps and they never do. But they are claiming that they updated footstep audio. There's, there's a lot of voiceover bug fixes. They added voiceover lines to fix an issue where the spawn sound effect could be cut off when respawning. 
So a lot of audio fixes supposedly, but you know, I, I, I have doubts. I have doubts. If they just make enemy sounds and teammate sounds so that, you know, they don't sound the same, I think that's a huge step in the right direction, but obviously most of the time footsteps don't play in the first place. I think footsteps work at, at most 10% of the time, but uh, yeah, okay, sure. If you're making any changes, that's still a better than nothing, I guess. And like I said, uh, Max Rank is now 50, there's new skins. Fix an issue where characters could have their legs bent backward on some screen. Someone in my chat, uh, in my Discord, sent me a picture of this before. And this is a really big one. This is not that big of a deal if you just play the finals or you don't care about the Amos' debate, but this is a massive deal, taking in mind of what's going on in Warzone, Call of Duty, and Apex. They're adding gyro aiming for the PS5 DualSense and the PS4 DualShock controllers. So not Xbox for some reason, but it's available on PS5, which is basically, if you guys don't know what gyro aim is, it's a very uh, interesting type of aiming, which you see more in the Nintendo Switch and in apparently some games on PlayStation 5, where you normally, when you aim, you know, you just use little, little nubs of sticks and you need a lot of aim assist usually or according to control console players to to actually aim but gyro aim allows you to use your whole arm as a lot of people like to say and just go like this this is now me aiming this is me turning around or whatever i think you can set it up i don't know exactly how it works but you just this add a level of you moving your controller uh, which adds aiming capability it lets you aim just by moving your controller in addition to using your thumbsticks which gives you a lot more ways to aim, a lot more accuracy, it lets you turn around faster, whatever you want. Uh, gyro is a massive change, and there's been a lot of debates about it in Apex because they haven't added it after five years, and it's a huge deal to me that they're adding it into the finals after a month. I think that is a massive change that I think will be very good for the, for the quality of the game. I think a lot of people will like that. Is it useful? Yes, very useful. It will, if you play on PlayStation, go try it out. It will take some time getting used to, but your accuracy will, should go straight up. Moving on. Emotes. Fix an issue that prevented a player from emoting when crouched. I don't care. Okay, defibrillators. These are some quality of life changes. I had this yesterday. Fixed an issue where player statues could not be targeted for revives when lying in foliage. Literally, it was stuck in a bush. This guy tried reviving me with a defib for 10 seconds. Fix an issue where player statues could not be targeted for revives when carried. Oh, so you can be revived when carried. That's a small change, but it will actually make, it make a huge difference. Fix various issues with placement distances on deployable gadgets. Fix an issue where... So, quality of life. Uh, fix an issue where turret parts could collide with each other, causing strange behavior when placed on barrels. Uh, game modes. So they added a new game mode, which we'll talk about. We can try it out later on the stream. Steal the spotlight event mode, as I understand it, it's like a solo story mode. Added the ability for players to customize their loadout for all weapons, gadgets, and specializations during the match lobby at the start of each match in all game modes. Which is just at the start of the match, not in I assume not in between every match, but uh, that's huge. So you can actually change it up a lot. Lower the number of rounds required to play ranked tournaments from 6 to 45, which we mentioned. And then this, they disable solo banking, which is fair. Monaco, they made some changes with uh, vision or with lighting. We're skipping past that. Movement, fix an issue players could become stuck in roach places. Fix an issue players could fail wall jumps if they press and held jump too early in a sequence. Fix an issue where the player would cancel a slide if aiming those. Just small pull up life. Like bug fixes. Security made improvements to security and cheat detection. We'll see about that. Increased default FOV for new installations. Added career rank screen where players can see the rewards earned by gaining rank. I thought that was in the game, but okay. Added new tournaments overview screen to over to tournament modes. Added additional tutorial videos for the following items. Added new event contracts to the contract screen. Updated the size of ranked icons. Fixed wrapping issues on contracts during the end of round sequence. Just a bunch of small fixes, nothing huge. Add a new impact effects when friendly players shoot each other instead of the coin effects as this would cause confusion for players. Updated collision and coin death effects. Various polish improvements to coin death effects. It just so it looks better. And these are usually interesting. These weapons changes or quality of life changes. Increase the size of various grenade projectiles to make them easier to see in combat. Fixed some issues where AoE damage could be wrongfully invalidated, causing no damage to be done. That's actually huge. That's huge. There's some AoE abilities that have been scuffed. Fix and exploit where melee weapons could be swung faster than intended. It's still melee weapons. It's not the it's not the punching exploit, but we'll see. I might make a video talking about like unmentioned, uh, undocumented patch notes. We'll see if there's a lot of them this time around. It feels like they could be. Fix an issue that prevented C4 and mines from being picked up when placed on a throwable object that had been picked up. That happened to me a lot, it's really annoying. That has more to do with like a nuke. Um, if you place a item like a C4 on a nuke, you put and you put the barrel down, you could no longer pick up the C4 again. Which I, I thought was intentional, turns out it was just a bug. But those are the patch notes. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and I'm gonna head on and play Solo to Diamond for the rest of the night. So I hope to see you guys in the stream. Alright.